Hi everyone, I'm Dawn from Morality and Media and Poor and Harms. We direct a project called Safe Schools, Safe Libraries. I just wanted to take a minute to explain why we launched this and why we're working so hard to make sure that uh, all libraries in the country have filters installed. Um, in last month, I just did a quick search of news articles around the country um, that talk about people accessing pornography in libraries and some of the consequences of that. And you can see here, uh, I've we've compiled these these articles and we have 340 articles that we found that talk about the problems of uh, of allowing pornography access in our libraries. And this search was done just uh, news articles between August of last year and February of this year, so only you know six months and 300 and oh, it's 380 articles that are talking about this issue all around the country. Um, we put together a website, Safe Schools, Safe Libraries Project, and on this we've we've also linked to some articles that talk about the problem. And I just wanted to share a few with you so that you understand the real consequences of of allowing this, and hopefully you'll get involved in the project and make sure that your local libraries are safe. Um, last year, New York, the New York City Public Libraries uh, made some public statements saying that they will allow access to pornography in their libraries and no one's going to stop them. Um, but you can see shortly after that, uh, there, there were was a slew of articles about this whole New York thing, but one patron who says, you know, you'll see three or four kids, 13 or 14 years old, and they're all gathered around a computer giggling, uh, and, and it's because they're all looking at pornography. All these kids are just, that's where they get it, and it's free, and so parents are sending their kids to the library thinking they're going to be doing schoolwork and so forth, and here there's, it's, we're learning that that's not all that they're doing. Um, do you want your kids to be exposed to pornography and to be accessing it at their library. Uh, also recently uh, in Massachusetts, a man was um, arrested for viewing child pornography on the public library computers. And uh, and actually in Lynn, Massachusetts, within a couple months, there were two cases of this happening with two different men accessing child pornography there. And, uh, and you know, kids are walking by, so they're going to see this. Um, a few years ago, we read about how a man, here let's just read this, um, who frequented the library often and really liked to look at pornography there. It says he is charged with rape and attempted murder after his brutal attack of an eight-year-old in the restroom of the Philadelphia Free Library's independent branch. He admitted that he choked her um, and the girl was hospitalized afterwards and this all happened right after he viewed pornography at that library because there were no filters in place. Um, here's, unfortunately, another story, a news article. You wouldn't expect a 10-year-old boy to be molested inside a public library. But according to these court records, that's exactly what happened Tuesday afternoon on the other side of this bathroom door at the hilltop branch of the Columbus Metropolitan Library. 19-year-old Michael Hill now faces several felony. Um, and again, as you will find out later, pornography played a, a role in that. The library is attracting predators because they know they can look at pornography there and they know that, that there are going to be kids there also. And so it's becoming a very dangerous place. Um, in Seattle, recently a, a mother and her daughter were exposed to pornography. Uh, they went and talked to the librarian about it, and the librarian, and this this was in Seattle. The librarian said, "There's nothing that we can do, and that they're going to continue allowing patrons to view and access pornography um, in their library system." Uh, there's so many articles similar to that one where where people people witnessed um, other patrons viewing hardcore pornography, and often that pornography is illegal. It's obscene. It's hardcore adult pornography, which is is actually illegal under existing laws. Um, here is a, just a police log. The caller said that library officials asked a man to leave who was viewing pornography next to young girls. Um, it, it doesn't matter who's around. This is happening 
in many libraries around the country where men or patrons are viewing pornography and kids are sitting right next to them. Um, and so those kids are going to be see it too, or going to see it too. Another thing that is is common in a lot of these news articles is are are men who are viewing images of, of pornographic images on the computers and then they print it out and they leave it around the library for whoever walks by to see. They get, they get off on that just knowing that a child or the librarian or the old lady is going to walk by and sit down and on the table right next to them there's going to be, you know images of bestiality and rape and they're going to be exposed to it regardless of how, if they want to or not. It happens often. Um, here, a group of, in, in California, a group of homeless men were caught watching pornography. One of the, man, one of the men um, was masturbating there in the group and that's also common. It's, of, it's often very common for people to come to the library and they're watching pornography and masturbating right there in public or exposing themselves as kids walk by or other patrons. Um, let's see. Another another big issue uh, with uh, allowing pornography in libraries is it is uncomfortable and creates a hostile work environment for the employees of the library. Um, a couple of this one talks about uh, in Minnesota, a group of twelve employees sued the library system because the library refused to do anything about it. Uh, it was 11 women and a man and they said that because the library allowed pornography to be accessed, about 25 men spent hours at the library trolling pornographic websites, masturbating, stalking them, making cat calls, and physical threats, luring children into viewing images of bestiality and rape, and they were intentionally even pronounced of pornographic images around the building. I, I mean, we just saw a bunch of articles that that said those same things. It's not just an isolated event. And here, these library employees were complaining about it. Um, right now, there's a case in Birmingham, Alabama, where a, a librarian is actually suing um, the library system that she worked for, too, because, uh, because the library refused to do anything about men exposing themselves, masturbating, uh, viewing pornography, and all of that right in front of children. Um, I just want to show you, I just did a quick search on YouTube of news um, clips and uh, again here are video news clips about uh, the issue of, of patrons viewing pornography in the library and there's a number of things that happen. Sex offenders are going, uh, you, can, you can check these out on our YouTube channel. Um, again, I just also did a quick search of, of people who are caught looking at pornography and I mean, it was. It just took me a few minutes, and I found all of these videos. And most, unfortunately, most of these videos were made by children who caught older men looking at pornography at the library, and they thought it was crazy and kind of funny, and so they recorded them, and then they uploaded it to their YouTube channels. But I mean, these are. This is only a few of the kids who are who are being exposed to pornography, and and uh, and the, and a lot of times the libraries are not taking um, measures to help protect them. It's, it's easy to install filters. Uh, today, the filters are very good. Um, they usually don't block too much content, and if they are, the librarian can easily take down the filter. But overall, these library computers, every computer at the library needs to have filters on it so that our children are not being exposed to this, so that they're not becoming victims. Um, and that, so that other patrons and librarians also can use the library free from all of these harms. Um, I hope that this helps you understand a little bit more about why we are leading this project to get filters installed in every library and school and why we're asking you to help lead the project in your community. We can't, we can't do this ourselves. We need volunteers. So if you're interested, go to safelibraryproject.com. Look around, see what's on there, and then contact us and let us know that you want to you wanna help.